This video defines integrals of functions of two variables as a limit of Riemann sums. In calculus one, we define the integral of a function of one variable over an interval AB as a limit of Riemann sums. We thought of the integral as representing the area under the function and above the y-axis between x equals a and x equals b. And we estimated the area by drawing a bunch of rectangles, say n rectangles for some number n, and estimating the area of each rectangle. So the area of rectangle number i, where i is some number like 1, 2, 3, etc., that's going to be equal to its base times its height. We are assuming all the rectangles have the same width, so we call that width delta x, and that's the base of our rectangle. But the height of each rectangle is different. And to find the height, we pick a sample point. For rectangle number i, we call the sample point x sub i star. It's some point on the x-axis in that little subinterval number i. And then we find the height of the rectangle by evaluating f on the sample point x sub i star. So the height is f of x sub i star. Now the total area is approximately the area of all the rectangles. So that's going to be the sum from i equals 1 to n, since they're n rectangles, of delta x times f of x sub i star. This is our Riemann sum. Finally, the actual area, the thing that's represented by this integral sign, we defined as the limit as the number of rectangles n goes to infinity of the area of the rectangles. This was our definition of the integral. Notice that notation-wise, as we pass from a limit of Riemann sums to the integral notation, our x sub i star becomes our x, and our delta x, the width of our rectangles, becomes our dx. We can use a similar method of Riemann sums to define the double integral of a function of two variables over a rectangular region where the, where the x values go from a to b and the y values go from c to d, as drawn here. We start by dividing up the interval from a to b into, say, m little subintervals, each of width delta x. Next, we divide the interval from c to d into, say, n subintervals, each of width delta y. That gives us a total of m times n subrectangles. A typical subrectangle is shaded in here. For each subrectangle, we build a tall rectangular prism above that subrectangle whose height is given by the function evaluated at some sample point inside the subrectangle. This figure shows the collection of all these tall rectangular prisms. To estimate the double integral, which we think of as the volume under this surface and above this large rectangle, we calculate the volume of all the rectangular prisms and add them up and then take a limit as m and n go to infinity. I can write this in mathematical notation as the limit as m and n go to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to m and from j equals 1 to n of the volume of the rectangular prism with index numbers i and j. Remember that m is the number of subintervals in the x direction, and n is the number of subintervals in the y direction. So i is counting through in the x direction, and j is counting through in the y direction. Now, the volume of one of these little rectangular prisms is going to be at the area of its base times its height. Now, the area of the base, that's the area of the little subrectangle. Sometimes we call that delta A, and we can also alternatively call it 
delta x times delta y, since delta x is the width in the x direction and delta y is the width in the y direction. Now the height is given by f evaluated at a sample point. So we need a notation for referring to sample points. I'm going to redraw this large rectangle with its subrectangles on a copy of the xy plane down here. Now if I want a sample point for the rectangle that's say three rectangles over and one two rectangles up, so a sample point right in here, I can do this by first choosing an x value in the third subinterval on the x-axis here. I'll call that x sub 3 star. And then choosing a y value in the second subinterval here, I'll call that y sub 2 star. Now for the sample point that I want here, I can use x sub 3 star, y sub 2 star. Similarly, if I want a sample point way up here, now that's five rectangles over in the x direction and six up in the y direction, I can pick a sample point in the fifth subinterval here and the sixth subinterval here and call that sample point x sub five star, y sub six star. Using that notation, if I'm looking at the height for the subrectangle that's in, that's number i in the x direction and number j in the y direction, then I can call that sample point x sub i star, y sub j star. And to find the height, I just evaluate my function on that sample point. Now I'm ready to rewrite my limit expression that represents my double integral. It's going to be the limit as m and n go to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to m j equals 1 to n of f of x sub i star, y sub j star, times delta a. Or I can rewrite delta a as delta x times delta y and get the following. This is the Riemann sum definition of the double integral. Once again, the x sub i star and y sub j star become the x and y in the integral notation and the delta a becomes our dA. Now let's use this Riemann sum definition to estimate this double integral where our rectangle given here is the rectangle where x goes in between 0 and 2 and y goes from 0 to 1. We're asked to use m equals 2 and n equals 2 so that means we want two rectangles in the x direction and two in the y direction for a total of four subrectangles. First, let's use sample points in the upper right corners. That means our sample points will be here, 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 and here. Those points have coordinates 1, 1 half, 2, 1 half, 1, 1, and 2, 1. We get the corresponding heights by plugging those sample points into our equation for our function. The corresponding heights are e to the minus 1 half, 2e to the minus 1, e to the minus 1, and 2e to the minus 2. Since the area of our subrectangles, delta a, is 1 times 1 half just by taking base times height, so that's equal to 1 half, we can compute the Riemann sum by adding up the product of our heights times our delta a. This is a little easier to compute if we actually factor out our delta a, that 1 half. This adds up to a decimal approximation of about 0.99. We can do the same process using the midpoint rule by using sample points exactly in the middle of each of these subrectangles. So our sample points will be the following, and here are the corresponding heights. The area of the subrectangle delta A is still 1 half, and this time the Riemann sum works out to about 1.15. Now we could continue computing Riemann sums using larger numbers of subrectangles to get more accurate answers. But there are much easier ways of computing double integrals than using the Riemann sum definition. And we'll see how to do that in the next video. In this video, 
we worked out the Riemann sum definition of a double integral over a rectangle. And we used it in an example.